I was at a seminar on Saturday morning organised by the Bristol Methodist District entitled Whatever Next? Mission After the Pandemic. It was a really interesting workshop and as all good workshops do, it's raised more questions for me than answers. Reverend Emma Nash, who is part of the Connectional Evangelism and Growth Team, gave the keynote address and she asked us, what might grow from the compost of COVID? She talked about all the stuff that we've been contending with over the last 15 months, probably none of which we would have chosen beforehand. And she invited us to think about how it might have become for us a kind of compost from which new things might grow. She described compost as an image of resurrection. Through a process of death and decomposition, something rich and fertile is constituted. And from this nutrient rich mixture, all manner of new life might sprout. A few years ago, we lived in a place where we actually had room for a compost bin and it was an amazing thing. There was a lid at the top where we could put in a lot of our kitchen waste and you had to hold your breath as you opened it because it was always full of little flies. Then there was a small door at the bottom and eventually when you opened it you could see that a miracle had occurred. All the old tea leaves and carrot tops and potato peelings and everything else had become a wonderful dark brown soil full of worms ready to be used in the garden. The transformation of a load of apparently useless bits and pieces into something different and useful and life-giving still remains a fascination to me and when we move next year I'm hoping to be able to have a compost bin once again. I could talk a lot about the kind of things in my life that over the last year and a bit have gone into the compost bin. Plenty of bits of rubbish have come my way the worst being coping with mental health issues and terminal illnesses within the family. Many people have also had to cope with things like redundancy, job insecurity, financial difficulties, homeschooling, domestic abuse, isolation, long Covid or the loss of family and friends due to either coronavirus or some other illness or accident. Often it takes a long, long time, years or even decades, to be able to identify anything positive that might have come from these kind of situations that we would dearly love to avoid if we could. The compost analogy falls down a bit when I think about the many things that have gone into the bin in this past year that for me were not useless bits of rubbish. Visiting family and friends, hugging family members who are not in my household, travelling for holidays, going to the cinema, theatre or concerts, singing in a choir, meeting up with my craft group, these are things that I have really missed. These are not redundant things that I'd outgrown or that no longer had any useful place in my life. And as we think about church life, perhaps we might feel the same about some of the things that we're missing. Or perhaps we might feel relieved that we've been able to let go of some things. Perhaps we might feel that we have an excuse now to lay some things aside and not take them up again. Everything that we've had to release, everything that we might feel has been taken from us during the pandemic has gone into the compost bin and even the old things will no longer be the same if we do choose to pick them up again. We have changed. The whole world is not the same and so everything is now in a different place. When we had a compost bin we also had some vegetable beds in our garden and we tried our hand at growing a number of things, some of which were successful and others which were less so. Don't waste your time on cauliflower, is all I have to say. We used our newly created compost in these beds and occasionally things would grow that we hadn't actually planted. I seem to remember that courgettes and butternut squash would frequently spring up from the compost and it felt like an extra blessing to receive these fruits that had nothing to do with us or our efforts at all. And this is what I kept thinking about on Saturday morning when the speaker had a picture of a pile of compost up on the screen. There's a relief in this because it reminds me that the effort is not all mine. It reminds me that God does the growing. Of course I have a part to play in noticing the shoots, in encouraging them to grow, in clearing away obstructions, in watching and waiting. But God does the growing. None of my efforts actually make the seeds grow. I don't need to flog myself to death under the impression that it's all about me. 
It reminds me of the parable of the farmer who sows his fields and then goes to bed and wakes up and goes to bed and wakes up and so on and so on and the seed grows and is eventually ready for harvesting. It's often named the parable of the seed growing secretly and in it we're told that the farmer doesn't know how the seed grows, it just grows and he watches and waits and sees when it's ready and then he goes out to bring it in. Our part in the process is often a lot less strenuous than we actually make it. God doesn't call us to be busy fools who rush around with blinkers on, doing what we think we ought to be doing, regardless of what the Spirit might be saying to us. God calls us to be people who watch and wait and notice. And in our watching and waiting, we seek the equipping of the Spirit so that we're ready to act when the time is right. So we have this compost and we have choices to make. What are we prepared to let go of? If we're really honest, what things are there that we know we need to leave behind in the compost bin as we begin to move into a less restricted life? Can we be people who are willing to sacrifice things that we're perhaps very fond of in order to nourish and nurture some new area of growth? And where are we looking for the shoots of God's kingdom to grow? It can be easy to only look at church life as if that's the only place where God will cause things to grow. But God is planting seeds and making them grow all around us. We could be sitting by a compost heap, gazing intently at the ground, wondering what's going to grow and when, yet surrounded by a forest to which we're completely oblivious. How can we catch up with where God is active in our communities? Can we come to understand that whoever we are, whether we're already followers of Jesus or not, we've all put something into this compost and each one of us could receive something completely unexpected from, us, from it. Isn't there much more joy in the unexpected blessings than in getting exactly what we think we want? I know that as church buildings begin to open in more and more ways, there are going to be pressures on me and my diary again. And although I've said it many times in the last few years, I really do mean it this time. Unsustainable busyness is no longer an option for me and it shouldn't be an option for anyone. Time is what I need. Time to think about the compost. Time to choose what to add to the bin. Time to let the transformative decomposition occur and time to watch for the growth. Time most of all to notice what God is doing to watch and wait and prepare, and time to be open and ready to receive and gather in all those unexpected blessings that remind me that God is the gardener. The constant cycle of life and death and new growth is always in God's hands, and nothing gets added to the compost and remains just the same as it was before. The possibilities for transformation are endless, just as endless as God's care for the garden, which is the whole world.